Hello, my name is Ashley Jeffords, and this is Julia Margaret Cameron, an early experimenter in realist photography. For my research, I wanted to talk about Julia Margaret Cameron, a Victorian photographer who was considered experimental in her time and produced photographs that invoked elements of the sublime even to a viewer today. Before I begin into my own argument, I'll give a brief introduction of the artist. Julia Margaret Cameron was a British national, but she was born and partially raised in Calcutta, India due to her father's position in the East India Company. She was born Julia Paddle in 1815 and spent her childhood moving with her sisters around India, France, and England, receiving a great education. In 1838, she marries marries Charles Cameron, author of the essay On the Sublime and Beautiful, written and published in 1835. He was a well-known liberal reformer. They had six children together, and in 1863, aged 48, her daughter gives her a camera. From there on out, she dedicated herself to her photography and aesthetic pursuits first focusing herself on producing portraits of the British elite cohabitating on the Isle of Wight as her muses of her new hobby. It must be noted that she was not taking commissions and actually garnered an interesting reputation of pestering the locals into modeling for her. Essentially, the point I am trying to make is she is not un operating under the commercial standards of portraiture at this time. She is free to experiment without the economic pressure to sell her artwork on her back. Now, I would like to take a moment to read my thesis statement for my research. Julia Margaret Cameron purposefully pushed the boundaries of aesthetics within her medium to create the photographic equivalent of realist painting, a rejection of the standards of fine art as applied to photography. One of her early works that I would like to talk about is The Southwest Wind, done by Julia Mar Margaret Cameron in 1864, just one year after she started photographing. It is an albumen silver print from glass negative, and it is important to note that over a third of her catalog is of women. Her quest in portraying them was to capture as much of their beauty an important Victorian concept as possible. Where men at the time were phot photographing women as dramatic and well-lit figures, Julia Margaret Cameron seeks out the softness of women. You can see here that this is a young girl who is draped and she is portraying the image of the Southwest wind as invoked in Greek mythology. It's quite a beautiful and um, sublime print. And another ex early example of her portraiture is her work of Sir John Herschel, done in April of 1867, just four years after receiving her camera. And it is an albumen silver print from glass negative. As a knighted and well-respected scientist, the contemporary standard would have been to portray him as dignified. A little bit of what we may consider stuffy, but certainly an idealized image of the man. She, who knew him as a friend from the Isle of Wight, chose to hone in on his unidealized aspects. His tasseled hair and almost grimace of an expression were not the Victorian standard. She created a haunting figure that we wouldn't have seen elsewhere. Now, I would like to draw our attention to the female gaze and Julia Margaret Cameron's position as a female artist as compared to her contemporaries. Here we have Pomona, a work by Julia Margaret Cameron Dunn in 1872, compared to Edouard Manet's Olympia, P. 
painted in 1863, and Lady Agnew of Lochnow, done by Joseph Singer Sargent in 1892. The 1872 photograph, Pomona, shows a 20-year-old Alice Little, muse of both Cameron and Lewis Carroll, as Pomona, the Roman goddess of gardens and fruit trees. What is so striking about this albumen print is Alice's gaze directly into the camera. Her gaze and her pose assert her figure as a strong and powerful woman attributes not often given to the female subjects of art. As a woman depicting another woman in a very unsexualized manner, Cameron was rejecting the art historical standard of the female figure under the male gaze. Moving on, we have Edouard Manet's Olympia, done in 1863, oil on canvas. As we have discussed in class, this work is intentionally provocative and shocked the Salon of 1865. The model is a real woman, known to contemporaries as a popular prostitute, indicated by her orchid, her bracelet, oriental shawl, and pearls. She is depicted in a sensual atmosphere and modeled after Titian's Venus of Urbino. Her Venus hand placed upon her crotch is not the inviting hand as seen on the Venus of Urbino, but one halting the figure, giving herself agency over her own sexuality. This work also deviates from the academic standard, and that's why it is a work of realism. Olympia is a real woman, and this was not something that the Salon was used to. John Singer, Joseph Singer Sargent's Lady Agnew of Lochnow is a commissioned portrait of Gertrude Vernon in 1892 by her husband, Andrew Noel Agnew. The gaze of Lady Agnew is complemented by her informal pose, meaning this is an informal depiction of this Victorian woman. And it complemented is complemented by the flowing fabric and lilac sash, which give an almost dreamlike quality to the work, but also pulls in the focus to the face. This work was displayed by the Royal Academy in 1893 and contributed to Sargent's growing and immense popularity as a portrait artist. It also made that woman, Lady Agnew, a contemporary figure in society known as a beautiful face. Comparing all three works of art as works of realism that focus on the confrontational gaze of the female subject, it can be understood that each artist is rendering from their own subjective experiences with contemporary women. It is interesting that where her male counterparts are painting into their compositions real women from contemporary society, Cameron takes a contemporary woman and turns her into a classical figure. Manet and Singer Sargent sexualized in their confrontation, where Cameron's figure is more confident in hers. All three works are works inspired by the realism movement, as they rejected the conventional standards of portraying contemporary figures and stepped away from the idealized image that had been so standard for so long. Going back to my thesis, Julia Margaret Cameron's rejection of standard Victorian photography is very present in her work, in her not paying attention to what is expected of a photograph, but instead leaning into her own artistic interpretation of what a photograph could be which I think is what gives her work its ethereal, sublime, and painterly quality that makes her so popular even today. Speaking on her own goals as an artist, Cameron said, to ennoble photography and to secure for it the character and uses of high art by combining the real and the ideal and sacrificing nothing of the truth 
by all possible devotion to poetry and beauty. I think very accurately sums up exactly what she did achieve through her works. She has a very interesting catalog and I would recommend everyone looking into her works and diving deeper into them. She clearly inspired many after her, including Diane Arbus, and it's very interesting to draw the link between them. Thank you for listening and have a great day.